Yes, Cartwright. I know I told the ambassador that I wouldn't be returning to London until next week. But I also told him I would not be available for any social functions here. So would you take your handsome gold top propelling pencil and make a note of that in your Morocco bound protocol book? Exactly, Cartwright. Yes, I am not available. Fine. The best thing that Cartwright could do for the diplomatic service is to defect to the Russians. Yes, Sir John. Oh, Dr. Vreeling is here, the Dutch engineer. Oh, he can wait for a bit. As my social secretary, you can ask him about the crocus bulbs in your office. And your London call is through. Oh, oh thank you. Yes? Yes, hello, Pamela. Did you have a good journey? Fine. Did you get hold of Granger? Oh, splendid. It's all fixed then. He's going to come out of his treasury mouse hole, huh? Good. Oh, yes, everything's packed up here. Yeah, yes. Keys handed in everything. Yeah, yes, I had the goldfish for breakfast. Yeah. Now, you're sure about Granger? Fine, fine. Bye. When Miss Weldon rings, would you tell her that I should be arriving in Paris with Dr. Breeling by train, so I shall be a little late? Oh, and uh, tell her... We shall be returning to London tomorrow. Yes, Sir John. Oh, one more thing. Puisque j'en ai maintenant l'occasion, mille merci pour votre gentillesse. Oh, merci. Wilder's supposed to be coming back next week. We have a few days yet then. After that, back to normal. Trumpets and alarms. <laughs> Oh, we haven't starved without him. These figures are good, Ken. Yeah, but the jobs aren't. What a harbour wall for Clogtown on Sea. Sewage line for Upper Widmerpool. The sort of jobs that Wiley wouldn't waste a telephone call on. Oh, I wouldn't blame him. He could lose the profit margins and the petty cash. Well, they keep a solvent. With trapeze artists like you and Wilder, somebody's got to stay on the ground. <laughs> oh, you're not listening, are you? Now, Father, look at these. Now, my dear Eric, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I was just packing up. The end of a diplomat. Oh, no, I was never that. The birth of a businessman. Rebirth. The Italians and my own firm want a decision by Friday. Oh, we'll talk about that on the train. But you take it very lightly. A consortium worth 50 million pounds. With Bly's shares at 20 million. Was that agreed? Yes. I have full authority to act. That's settled it. You still need the full concurrence of your colleagues and adequate government credit guarantees. It's like buying a lollipop. There's still half an hour to the train. Ah. Would you like a glass of wine? Very well. I shall be sorry to leave this mausoleum. But you're going very quietly. Where's the English love of ceremony? No red carpets, no brass bands? I've discovered the more quietly you depart, what noisily you can arrive. Salud. We haven't done badly this last six months. Flies taking over, jobs we understand. And low profits. Father, I've three major contracts lined up. Yes, now that I've seen them, fairy tales withdrawing. Well, at the moment, but not if we work at them. They're all feasible, all in this country. Yes, but uh, there'll be no cutbacks on the smaller jobs. None. None. I want your full backing on these three tenders. Against Wilder, the United Front, on their merits. All right, Ken. You have it. Full support. Thank you. In five or six days, we shall see what magic rabbit Wilder is going to pull out of his European hand. Where can I drop you? Uh, the route back. Our Paris office is there. I have a meeting with Candotti. Our Italian partner? And I'm not invited? No, Sir John, my Italian partner. He and I are the only ones committed. As yet. We will be on Friday. I hope so. In Holland, we have to catch the goat before we can milk it. It's already caught. Just bring your bucket and stool. That's why I'm coming to London, to see you. I take your word that I've yet to meet anyone who can make a profit out of promises. 
and this is the biggest joint venture that either the Italians or my own firm have ever been. Then bring two buckets. Now, the reservoir looks a likely one. Start on that. It's an easier design job. Oh, uh, sorry, Kenneth. Message from Wilshire. He wants you to telephone him on number seven site. <laughs> what were you doing down there? My usual busy little stint, making sure the night watchmen were properly dressed, coke buckets, regulation size, all other matters of urgency that go with my job. Don't be saucy with me, Henderson. Why not? You gave me a meaningless job. I may as well tell you it's meaningless details. The director of personnel relations is hardly that, Don. Not in most firms, Kenneth. Only under the Bly banner. Anyway, I've delivered the message. And I've saved the firm sevenpence in telephone calls. All right, I'll ring him. You can always resign. After six months of your petty needling, Caswell, don't think I've not thought of it. But why should I do you any favours? <laughs> There's no need for that, Father. Nobody knows that either Vreeling or myself are in London. Yes, Sir John. I shall apply my usual civil servant's discretion. I've enjoyed these trips. Thank you. I don't take that as a compliment to your position as British industry's leading boudoir entertainer. It isn't. Well, don't tell me it's because you're improving your French. Since you've been away, I've been fairly happy. Working hard at a job I like and being good at it. And then whenever I felt bored being whisked off to Paris like an old-time gaiety girl. It's about time it ended, though. I nearly didn't make this trip. What? Why? Well, we're very busy at the export port. There's lots happening. Oh. Important? <laughs> not that way, not to you. But it is my job. It's important to me. You've never worried about it before. I've never had much ambition before. I'm not sure that I like ambition in women. It's a bit unnatural, like throwing the discus. Well, it's not athletics in my case. It's more a form of insurance. And when it comes to ambition, I've had a very good teacher. Just say that um, I'm sorry about yesterday, Don. Father gets. Oh, well, you know how he is. Yes, I know how he is. Jackboot Bly, one of nature's bullies. I said I'm sorry. About six months too late. And you'd be surprised how little it matters. Well, the hell with him, Kenneth. And the hell with you, too. Anything else? No, no, that was about all. Oh, there is one thing. I thought there might be. John's asked for a complete report on all commitments, projects, and work in progress. Big job. Yes, it'll take months to get together. So he can't have it? No, I'm afraid not. Mm. Well, he'll just have to make do with mine, then. What do you mean, yours? You know, one of the advantages of being shunted into a harmless cipher job like mine, Kenneth, is that people chat to you. Good old Don, he's harmless. We can talk to him. Six months of it. Listening, ambling around, asking damn fool questions. A free education, Kenneth. Especially to a man with my lethargic, inquiring mind. Before, shunting backwards and forwards for John, I didn't know much about this firm. By God, I do now. Especially current work and projects. All wrapped up. Ready for delivery to Wilder. <laughs> Never occurs to any of you, does it? That I'm capable of using the knowledge myself. Thank you. You look careworn, Don. I get used to it. You should see my collection of slings and arrows. <laughs> When's John coming back? Oh, he was deliberately very, very vague. About four or five days, I should think. I'm a sort of harbinger, a herald to remove the dust sheets. The first swallow. Amen. He seemed to think you'd have some sort of business report for him. Yeah, well, it's, it's not quite ready yet. 
Meaning you'd rather deliver it yourself? Mm. That's the guts of it, as my friend Caswell Bly would say. Steely-eyed, puffing on his pipe. <laughs> Caswell's not so bad, really. Bad? It's a throwback to the Bly they pitched off the bounty. Quite a creditable voyage, Mr. Christian. <laughs> Only ten men down with scurvy. Bravo. Mm. Hello, Pamela. Hello. You must be one of the mutineers. Not yet. But keep your eyes peeled during the dog watch. <laughs> Don, this is Charles Granger, an old friend of mine. Charles, this is Don Henderson. Oh, how do you Charles is in the treasury. Oh, well, I'd better be going then. I owe some taxes. No, do stay. Have a drink. Uh, no, thank you. I've uh, delivered Pamela. I really must go. That's one of John's business associates. I worry about him. Yes, obviously. How's the treasury? Active. I seem to spend half my life sitting in aeroplanes on my way to haggle with foreign governments. How's John? Oh, Active probably describes him too. He's still in Brussels, I think. Good. I shall have the pleasure of lunching you alone. I think he wants to see you when he gets back. I'm sure he does. I'm equally sure he wants to ask some sort of favour. He'll be wasting his time. Let's order. Any word from Wilder? No, none at all. I just telephoned Brussels. He was said to be with the ambassador. Hmm. Not like him to keep out of touch. Oh, by the way, Ken, you have to uh, take the meeting without me this afternoon. Oh, no, you're not going to the National Export Board again. God, I wish that damn board were a commercial concern, then at least I could buy shares. Well, you'd lose your shirt the way it's going. All talk, no action. Get me Brussels again. James has just passed his foreign office exams. As his father, I'm disappointed in his choice of department. But you'll probably find the treasury a bit dull. No solar topees and gin on the veranda. No, all he's likely to get these days is a bomb through the embassy window. <laughs> I thought I might join you for coffee. Is that all right? Yes, of course. I thought you were in Brussels. So did I. So did everyone else. Something cropped up. Here we go. I thought I might turn to Charles for advice. Highly convenient. For you, I mean. Uh, don't do the striped trousers act with me, Charles. It might be highly convenient for you or your department as well. A three-nation consortium is being formed. Blyes could have the English end of it. I've been asked to arrange it. The job is an Italian regional development scheme. The British end of it is worth 20 million. And without the flummery, you want to know your chances of government credit? In a word, yes. Your well, chances are, in a word, nil. Oh, John, you can't bend regulations like that. You might barely qualify if the job were all yours. As a joint venture, never. Put away the absolutes and just listen for a moment. Couldn't we order brandy first? First, the British end is a majority share. We specify all plant and materials which would be British. Mm -hmm. Slight export advantage there. It's not my department. Oh, don't be so parochial. You're in favour of the common market. Now's your chance to prove it. Well, add a slight political advantage, but it's impossible, John. Really? If the British don't get the majority share, it'll either go to East Germany or Israel. And we know which two spheres of influence they come under. Mm -hmm. The advantage is a little bigger. You said Italy. How much is the whole job worth? Fifty million. The Italians have a consortium share. Now, big enough to need political backing. And their political backer is Contini. Go on. Play the A's. Your department's investigating investment reform with him. He said you might be willing to help. That sort of approach makes it much more likely I'll squash the whole damn business. I could, you know. That's what I told Contini. He said that he thought you would be shrewd enough to look at the overall advantages first. I wonder if he was right. John's become quite a diplomat. I had my share of pious hot air in Brussels. This transaction's good for the country, and Charles knows it. He only has to step over his dignity. Brandy, please. All right. I'll do what I can. Good. We have until Friday. I saw Caswell Bly at the NEB yesterday. He didn't mention it. Well, at the moment, he's rather leaving things to me.
Dr. Breeley. I'm so happy you could come, Mr. Blythe. Sit down, please. Oh, I'm glad you telephoned. I remember your paper on Earth Dams very well. No time for academic papers these days, I'm afraid. Oh, well, it's a great pity. What brings you to London? I beg your pardon? Uh, sorry, I, I asked what brought you to London. I arrived yesterday with Sir John Wilder. But he's in Brussels. He's not talked to you? No, I haven't seen Wilder for a month. What's it about? Mr. Bly, please. Mr. Kenneth Bly. Here, I have a telephone message for you, sir. Thank you. No, just... There's a meeting with Sir John Wiley this afternoon. Thank you, sir. And we shall talk later. Coffee? No, John. I'm sorry, but no. Don't waste my time, Don. Give me that report on current work and projects and then take a week's holiday. Fine. Splendid. Everything normal. I go away for a week. But what do I come back to? I have a meeting in ten minutes. Look, I need that report. Johnny, in, in name, I'm a director. In fact, I'm an errand boy, but I'm not coming back to that. I've spent six months learning this business, John. In spite of the Blyes and their family chat and their locked filing cabinets. And there's no time for that now. No, and there never will be. Look, I want a golden handshake or a real job. I'm sick of bouncing along in your way, John. I'd, I'd prefer the real job. Here or with the competition, I don't care which. Eight minutes. Damned if I will. I'll manage without your grubby report. Then I'd better start writing those letters. Do what the hell you like! Uh, just one thing. For old times' sake. All you need to know at that meeting is that Kenneth's been punting for three big jobs. Well, no, he doesn't stand a chance with two of them. But he doesn't know that yet. Did you get the message to Mr. Kenneth? He'll be here shortly. Hmm. Uh, there was a call from NEB while you were at lunch. Uh, would you ring Miss Weldon? Oh, no, you'd do it. It's probably some point of order. Oh, there's Mr. Henderson to see you. Oh, he can wait. Hello, Caswell. And the efficient Miss T. Uh, thank you, Miss Tillingshead. That'll be all. No calls. Well, John, you're back early and quietly. Well, put it down to keenness. How are things? Hmm? We've managed. You've seen last quarter's figures. No, I should have done. But then you can always blame your Miss Tillingshead. Or you can blame Henderson. Or perhaps we didn't want to worry you with the nation's destiny at stake. <laughs> oh, hello, Kenneth. I'm sorry for this short notice. You needn't be. I've just seen Vreeling. What's it about? Oh, didn't he tell you? No, Vreeling's an honest man. Or a careful one. With him, it would be hard to tell the difference. Well, he's a competitor. What were you doing with him at all? Well, if you can't beat them, Run them. Well, Reeling's an engineer. He won't let you run him. Perhaps he would as a, a member of a consortium. Go on. The consortium is being formed for an Italian regional development scheme worth 50 million pounds. 15 millions for the Dutch. That's a lot of gilders, Kenneth. And that's why Reeling is being careful. 15 millions for the Italians. Patriotism plus profit and 20 millions for the British. I have committed lies for the British end. Well, without discussion? Well, then you can uncommit lies, and quick. We still have a board of directors, you know. Your hand-picked collection of tail-waggers. Babble it to them, and you have every vulture in the business flapping down on us at your age, as well. It'll need government guarantee. I've got it. You can't have. I've got it. Don't teach me finance, Kenneth. Anyway, it's too big. We're already committed. To what? Hopes, promises, have you other jobs? Oh, we'll get them. And they're safe. And have my full support. Safe? Ha! And with your full support? Well, now, this is a tune on a different bugle. You know, 20 million is a third of our turnover. Now, it's not going on one job. By the way, what nice juicy apple do you pluck out of this? Project director, 
and managing director of a special consortium. Oh, 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 you're raving. You expect me to hand over Blythe to you on a plate? Yeah, even with guarantees, it's too big for us. And you're not enough of an engineer to run it. <laughs> you might be. I might. No. But I say no. But give me one good reason. Because I say so. That's all the reason Blythe has ever needed. Yeah, I've forgotten what it was like. You striding around your tin pot empire with Kenneth snivelling at your heels. This is the biggest chance you'll ever get. And you're arguing like two old women buying meat for the cat. Oh, it's easy enough to take risks with other people's money. That's what business is for. Risk and profit. Except in this, this church bazaar. Then walk out. Put your two years in the church bazaar down to experience. I might very well do that. He goes straight over the fence to Straker's. If I do, Kenneth, I'll take every penny of Elbertson's money with me. Now, start counting. <laughs> hmm. If only he hadn't been so secretive. This consortium might be worth looking at. No! Give over too much control to Wilder. We could modify that. No. On principle. Now, you asked me for my support, and you got it. I'm not asking you for yours. I expect it. Yes. Yes, Minister, I've heard from Italy. Wilder was right. There is a definite connection. The whole affair can do us nothing but good. A combination of luck and circumstances. I'll go ahead then. Oh, no, I wouldn't think so. Wild is much too involved to Welsh at this stage. I'll have a word with him anyway. Really? The National Export Board? Oh, I see. Could I mention that? Discreetly, of course. Yes. Yes. Get me Lady Wilder, please. I'll hold. Oh, Pamela, it's Charles. Look, I want to see John. And it's rather important. Could I visit you this evening? Yes, Charles, we'd love to see you. Yes, tonight will be fine. We're almost straight now. Yes. About what time? No, no, it's not important, but you sounded rather official. If it's going to be formal, I should like to know whether to serve cocktails, claret or cocoa. What? Just make sure that John is here. Well, that's easier said than done, but I'll try. <laughs> All right, Charles. Goodbye. You're early. I was intrigued by the invitation. You know John's back? Yes. <clears throat> you know why? Yes. Well, that's more than I do. I don't believe you. I hope he's after some nice, fat commercial job. I'm sure you do. Don't patronize me, Mr. Bly. You do very well to hope for the same thing. Mr. Gillingham is resigning as chairman of the Export Board, and the job is Sir John Wilder's for the asking. Does Wilder know this? No. You're the first and only person I've told. You don't have to trust me. I have perfectly good selfish reasons. I could have had the chairmanship once. Well, you're still second choice. A long way behind John, but he did some brilliant work in Brussels. If Wilder gets the chairmanship, I shall be off the board in three months. And finished politically in six. Back to building roads. Why are you telling me this instead of him? Because if John becomes chairman, I'll be finished too. I'll be forced to transfer. I see. Is Sefton Kemp leaving too? Yes, which leaves the board secretary's job vacant. Well, I can't hope to get that for at least ten years, but I do have the seniority, the experience and the ability to step up to principle if John doesn't become chairman. We are both after jobs, then. Yes. 
The difference is that mine is the only one I've got. Now, won't you take your coat off and sit down? Thank you. I think I will. You're telling me that Sir John Wilder has not the full concurrence of his colleagues? Ah, oh, I didn't say that exactly. No, just answer yes or no, please. No, it's not as simple as that. It's under discussion. I must know the results soon. There are lots of snags. Credit guarantees, for instance. Wilde has promised these. Yes, but... I've already spoken to one of your government. He's kept this promise. That's one of the reasons he was invited to join us. He's not an engineer. Ah. But I am. And so is your father. Is this a problem? Hmm, part of it. And it's a domestic squabble and none of my concern. How firm is the agreement that Wilder should be project director? It's not an agreement. An understanding. We would consider another nominee. If that nominee can deliver what Wilder is capable of delivering uh, by Friday. Well, this is quite a state occasion. John telephoned and said he'd be back for dinner. Some exotic recipes from Brussels. Oh, oh. none of the staff ever stayed long enough for me to collect any exotic recipes. John manages to terrify the life out of them without them understanding a single word he's saying. <laughs> I wish someone would invent a really thick-skinned robot. Mm, it would probably join the foreign office. <laughs> Hello, Charles. Hello, John. Everything all right? Oh, yes. No worries. Good. Well, that's one relief. Oh, here we go again. In my absence, the Blyes have been reviving old-time music hall. <coughs> Duet for insular engineers. Well, uh, yes, I must go and hover in the kitchen. Make hostess noises. What's this, then? Several developments, John. I'd prefer them to be put to you in private. I'm now fully committed on your consortium stunt. So are two or three very high-level people. The decision's been taken that this scheme is in the country's interest. So, I don't want you welshing on this project, or conniving with it, or using it as a lever. The bluntness is because I'm paying you the compliment of saying that if you did welsh on it, there isn't anyone in this country who could stop you. I'm glad to see that the fine old art of diplomacy is not entirely dead. I take it there are no snags. None that can't be overcome. You're sure of that? The project's under your control. Yes. But not if you become chairman of the National Export Board. An unlikely happening. Uh, I should like it, but it's unlikely. It's not unlikely at all. Gillingham and Sefton Kemp are leaving. The chairman's job will be offered to you. Enough to make you Welsh from the consortium? Well, enough to make me think about it. Don't. Long-term plans call for the National Export Board to be quietly and discreetly absorbed by other bodies. Well, well, well. So the NEB is about to become a dead horse. I didn't say that, John. I meant only that it might be acquired or merged. Its powers might be curtailed rather than expanded. This obviously affects the chairman's job and its prospects. Who do we know who wants to buy a dead horse? I ought to come out for coffee more often. I'm supposed to be here finishing some important work requiring peace and quiet. That's what they tell me at the National Export Board. Well, may not happen often. But it depends on how important you may become. Very important. The wilder disease, highly infectious. Mm. Let's go. Let me call for a car. Oh, no. Not likely. I'll take a taxi. One, is, one of us must exercise some discretion. That's a very laudable change of attitude. It's better. Susan, mm -hmm. you heard about Gillingham's leaving? No. Well, no, of course not. Why, have you? Well, if you haven't heard, how could I possibly find out? Wishful thinking, perhaps. 
I become used to the pomp of official position. You're lying, John. Isn't everyone? The others won't be here for ten minutes. I asked Mr. Henderson to come in. Thank you, Marjorie. Oh, and will your Dutch friend take tea or coffee? Ooh, uh, coffee, black. Black. Ah, come in, Don. Quick word before this shambles of a meeting starts. Oh. Optimists of the world unite. How badly does John want to run this consortium? I'm afraid I've no idea. What would he take in exchange? You must think I'm the first cuckoo in spring. Last week I was the boy counting fire buckets. This week I'm being treated as if a directorship really meant something. Well, there's something you don't know. We've just lost two big jobs. Oh. A bypass and a reservoir. How do you know? Well, I'm in this business too, Kenneth. So, John's got an even bigger job and you want to take it from him. Politely, if possible. I can persuade my father to take on the consortium if I'm running it. Cozy for you. All right, you justified. Don, I'm asking for help. You could be project coordinator. Well, not this way. If I can't earn it, I don't want it. What does John want for the consortium? Why don't you ask him? Ah, good morning, Mr. Caswell Blyzer. Good morning. And an exceptionally fine morning it looks like being, too. What is he gibbering about? Oh, it's the effect you have on some people, Father. I think Henderson should be made project coordinator. On behalf of Wilder, not likely. No, no don't, don't bother me with that now. I've, um, I've just seen Billy Straker. Oh, yes, I know the rest. He got the two jobs we lost. I think we should take on this consortium. And give a third of the firm to Wilder? No. It would not I don't be giving argue. Firm. No. Where is Wilder anyway? He should be here by now. Reeling and the Italians would take me as project director. After the hash you made of Ashani, no, leave it alone. We'll find enough. Well, work. let's talk about it at well, least. I said the I'm not prepared to argue. Now, I'm not even prepared to listen. Dr. Reeling, sir. Oh, how do you do? Glad to meet you. You will know my son, I believe. As we have met. Now, there's one thing I'd like to say in the very beginning. Excuse me, sir. I. Uh, sir John Wilder has left a message. His deepest regrets, and he's unable to attend the meetings. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, just a moment. Did he phone from the NEB? Uh, he may have done, Mr. Bly, but Mr. Henderson took the message. Shall I ask him? No, no, don't bother. I'm very sorry, Dr. Wheeling. It really must have been something extremely important. Yes, of course. Well, perhaps we should postpone our meeting until Sir John is... Oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of it. <clears throat> now, um, let me say, uh, first of all, how enthusiastic we all are about this project. I mean, we've had some idea, a few details from Sir John, but uh, we are eager to learn as much as we can from you. Hello, Don. I thought yesterday you looked in need of an outing. You're developing a twitch or a mind of my own. Oh, that's good, too. I thought we'd have a drink, lunch and a round of golf. Make the most of the few fine days. I'm taking life very easily. Everyone else was flapping about the meeting this morning. Kenneth with a face like last winter and a hat full of brine. John, what are you up to? Well, I'm not officially back yet, am I? Well, everybody else is showing a strain. You uh, mentioned bribes. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, <coughs> Kenneth's gasping for this consortium director job. What would you accept in exchange? Is this a message? Those days are over, John. This is just a piece of reporting. I told him to ask you himself. Well, the answer is a sad smile and the word nothing. The consortium is a third of Bly's turnover. Next year, overseas trade could account for half, and thereafter that. One of my long-standing preferences is for the majority share of anything. I was offered the job of project coordinator. You should accept it. Over Caswell Bly's dead body. No need. 
Offering that progress report that you've prepared for me. Six months unstinted hard labor. Be sincere, boyish, dedicated. You must appear to change sides, Don. I'm staying neutral. Tell Caswell that then. What about you? There are more advantages in knowing that somebody's neutral than you think. Shall we go into lunch? I'm sure John knows about the chairman's job. He's certainly lying low. Well, we can't do much until the resignation's announced. At least I can't. I um, talked to a couple of people casually. They don't like Wilder for the job, but they need him. Gillingham wasn't tough enough. The NEB could fall to pieces. They need somebody like John, but it can't fall to pieces. You see, a lot of these boards were set up as smoke screens. But they have more powers now, especially the National Export Board. It still has not enough. I'd fight for powers, secretly or openly. I'd use whoever or whatever I could. I'd make it work. I'd make the politicians stick to their reasons for establishing these boards. I'm leaving. God knows why. Well, you both do. In our different ways. What's the use? Lots of use. Let's order. Something light, but nourishing. Why didn't Don stay for tea? He's in a hurry to announce a conversion to the fly brand of primitive family religion. I think he'll become a sidesman. You sound in a very good mood. Well, I'm in the fortunate position of having become the owner of a double-headed penny, and everybody's rushing around begging me to spin it. Sound as if you've played 18 holes in the clubhouse with corks. It's a very respectable club. Anyway, you're right about people rushing around. There have been heaps of telephone calls. Oh. Oh, Bly's, Elbertson's, National Export Board. An unnamed caller there. Secrecy is the hallmark of the well-trained civil servant. You know there are some departments they won't even tell each other the time. You know what I mean. No, Pamela, I don't. Or I must go and change. I don't want her phoning you here, John. I shan't be here for dinner. Somewhere quiet and shady, I hope. Possibly. Dark corners, discreet waiters. I don't want to point out that some of your business transactions would have been a lot more difficult without my connections. Charles Granger, for instance. I admit that, Your Honour. I'm only trying to say that I helped too. I don't want this Susan Weldon circus starting again. I'm getting a little tired of sweet reason and tolerance. May I go and change now? Yes. Toddle off to your rendezvous. Oh, well, by the way, I'm dining with Charles Granger. It'll be business and it'll be boring. But if you would care to join us. Good morning. There's the report I told you about yesterday. Oh, thank you. Good morning, Kenneth. Well, there's no time for that now. Well, you were looking for a job for Henderson yesterday. But I can wait. We must have a decision on the consortium. Oh, this looks like the first decent work breakdown since I was doing it. Well, give him the job, then. On a trial basis. But his salary rate is at pretty much a free ride lately. But we know where he stands uh, now. Squarely on the fence, as always. Oh, that was your idea. I think Henderson knows something. Why else should he give us this report instead of giving it to Wilder? I think you know something, too. And it's not lies. You're hedging on the consortium. And you're too intolerant and opinionated to hedge. Thank you. With your vast experience, of course, you have a simple solution. Well, at least I know what I want. Which is something with you hedging and Wilder conniving. And I want the consortium and me running it. Well, that's simple enough. Keep it in the family, you said. Well, I'm family, and today is Friday. And if Reeling doesn't have a decision today, we can kiss the whole thing goodbye. And start tendering for bus shelters. Well... Give me a minute.
All right, Ken. You can have it. I can't really see what you're concerned about, Dr. Breeling. Yes, everything will go through as we discussed it in Brussels. I shall be consortium project director. I thought that was understood. Hmm. Papers? Well, they'll be signed today. Uh, later on this morning, I should think. That's fine. Well, we'll be in touch. Hmm. Yes? Mr. Charles Granger is holding Sir John on the private line. Thank you. Charles, good morning. I must say, I'm very impressed with your sources of information. Hmm. Yeah, I've just left the minister. What? Oh, there, highly affable. Uh, at one stage, I thought he was going to carry me across the threshold. Yes, I was offered the chairmanship. No, no, no. Don't worry. I was suitably non-committal. Great honour and time to think. Blah, 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 yes. Yes, I shall turn him down on Monday. Fine. Thank you, Charles. Goodbye. Oh, hello, Caswell. I was just coming to see you. I've saved you the trip. Hmm. Well, uh, I was going to back down. I think I could do it more gracefully in my own office. Oh, this should be interesting. Yes, I've decided to drop the consortium. Still a good idea, but if you're so strongly against it, I'll concede. That's all. All? No more? Have you told Reeling yet? No, no, not without discussion. We are taking on the consortium. Well, that's a change of heart. And I'm going to run it. Which accounts for the change. With respect, Kenneth, you are not in the same political league as our collaborators. Uh, Contini, who's backing the Italians, could eat you for breakfast. And Reeling, despite all his politeness, could outmaneuver you in his sleep. There's more to it than this, and you know it. The NEB. That is not a fit subject for discussion here. Catherine. Gillingham is leaving. Which is privileged information. You ought to know better than babble it in front of outsiders. Outsiders? In this context, yes. Family ties do not apply everywhere. You do well to remember that. I'll talk about this, Caswell, but not with Kenneth here. You better go, Ken. Divide and conquer. Old but effective. Isn't it? It's true, then. Gillingham is leaving and you've accepted the championship. I had no choice. None at all. I'm not stupid, Wilder. Choice never came into it. No, oh, yes. I was told very plainly that the Bly family would not accept me as project director. I have very little sense of harmony, but I do know a second fiddle when I hear it. Not my instrument. Nor mine. With control of the consortium, plus my present powers, I might have an incentive to stay here plus perhaps a share option, as it is. If you're making me an offer, spit it out! I've made it. I should want a new contract, of course. Mm. You'd step down from the other job? Leaving the NEB chairmanship to you. Springboard for political glory. Mm. You're like a little boy with an ice cream in each hand, Caswell. You don't know which to lick first. What about Kenneth? As your son, that's your problem. As a fellow director, he'll have to accept the majority vote. As I did. Once I'm chairman, I might kick you off the NEB. That would be kicking your own company squarely in the face. Anyway. The NEB might turn out to be a dead horse. <laughs> Not with me running it. I take it you accept them. <laughs> I'll have a new contract drawn up. Nothing's free, Caswell. <laughs> <laughs>